Hey everyone, here talking about the yearling chapters 17 through 20. Okay, so you had quite a bit happen, and ha these four chapters have a lot of description in it. Okay, so I'm going to start off with 17, where Jody makes a deal with his father if he readies the sweet potatoes, then he can go see Fodderwing. Okay, so he's out there working. And it says it's been about like two weeks since Buck left and that Penny's feeling stronger. He still gets dizzy and stuff like that from time to time. But um, as far as food and things like that, everything's going pretty well. Okay. Your one problem there's they kind of mentioned at the beginning is that fly because he's getting bigger. He's starting to get into things. And now that he's getting bigger, milk alone doesn't suffice. So he's getting into other bits of food like greens and cornbread and biscuits and stuff like that. So as far as the sweet potatoes in his work, he doesn't necessarily finish all of it. But he makes a deal with him if he'll go get um, some water from the sinkhole for his mother, then he can go ahead and go and see Potterwing. So he heads out to the sinkhole, gets the water. And hmm, when they get back, they um, talk about because of the time of year that bears are mating. So as far as Jody, while he's traveling, he just needs to be careful. So once or before he leaves, his mother makes him go get some wood for him. And she can kind of tell he probably didn't do all the work with the sweet potatoes, but his father let him, lets him go anyways. So he's walking with the fawn and he smells a terrible smell. And when he looks ahead, he sees some male bears fighting. And then he eventually sees there's three male bears, a female bear. And so for him, he gets like, this is something like his father would tell a story about. And so he's excited to go and tell Fodderwing all about it. So he makes his way to the foresters and as he gets there, he can tell something's different. And so he yells out for Fodderwing, and uh, Buck comes outside. And Buck says he's dead, like just flat out, he's dead. And for Jody, it doesn't even register. He says, I, uh, I come to see him. And he reiterates that it's too late. I mean, they didn't even have time to go get the doctor. He died that morning. And then Buck says he can come in. So remember, this is like Jody sees death as far as in the scrub with animals and things like that. And he doesn't like it then. So this is the first time he's experiencing the death of a friend, of someone he cares about. So he goes inside with Buck and Buck takes him into the room where you have Fodderwing's body and Ma Forrester is in there and she's just totally shaken up and he walks in there um, and Buck said, you know, he's like, you can talk, he won't hear you, but you can talk to him and all Jody can get out is hay and then he turns around and buries his face um, in Buck's chest. And you have Pa Forrester, and it says, Ain't it strange we could have spared any of them fellers? The one we can't spare is the one that was taken. So it tells you that as far as this family, this is their soft spot, the youngest one that, that they always took care of. He, and he wasn't one that could make the family money and do what the other boys do but he was the one that they all cared the most for. So it's totally broken the entire Forrester family. So you have Jody go outside to check on Fodderwing's animals and he feeds, nobody's really been paying any attention to him. So he takes care of all of them and then immediately he wants, it makes him want to see his fawn. So he goes and sits with the fawn for a while and it's kind of like Jody, He's like, do I leave? But he feels like he should stay. And so he goes in and asks if he can help. So he goes and helps Ma Forrester with food. 
and she sets a place for Fodderwing like she always would. So Jody sits there, and then he saves his portion of food for the fawn. And you find out that the whole reason Jody went there is to show Fodderwing his fawn and to get a name. So you find out he named the fawn Flag, which is another name for their little tail. And so he goes and he feeds the fawn, and then he comes back inside and um. You can tell the foresters are expecting him to stay and the reason for that is to stay up at night with them he thought he might want to do that since they were best friends and also they're going to have the funeral so that night when jody doesn't come home penny knows something's up so penny arrives and finds out what happened to fodder wing and so he stays there and um penny talks about and even ma forster brings this up how many children they lost. And he, Ma Forster says, I don't know how your mom's done it. She's lost a, a ton of them and I've lost one and I can bear I can't take it. And so Jody stays up with in fodder or in fodder wing's room while he stays for a little bit and he falls asleep in there. And when he wakes up, fodder wing's not in there anymore and they're going to have the funeral. So you have Penny speak at the funeral and it it talks about you know he talks about Fodderwing's way with animals and wild creatures then that he feels like he's up there in heaven not bowed over can run around and do whatever he wants to do and that God will give him a few wild creatures to take care of up there so as they're leaving Buck comes out and gives Jody Preacher which is the bird the red bird and he goes, I know your mom doesn't necessarily want you to have a whole bunch of pets, but because it's so little, he figures that she'll let him keep this one to remember Fodderwing by. So they get home and Ma's not extremely happy that they've been gone for so long. And Penny tells her that, um, you know, Fodderwing's gone. And he reiterates to her that that family's taking it so, so hard. And you can tell in this little moment, Ma Baxter has no hard feet. I mean, she's like, don't tell me those big old somebodies really care about that. Like, she's sarcastic. She doesn't want to believe it. And Penny brings up something for her that um, when, when sorrow and death comes, it, it always affects the human heart. And he says, it seems to me sometimes it ain't done nothing to you but sharpened your tongue and made you angry. And she even says, like, she even responds, seems like being hard is the only way I can stand it, which is why she is the way she is with Jody. She's not extremely affectionate, and it's because of all the death she's had to endure. So chapter 18, it's August. It's extremely hot. Um, the Baxters now have all their hogs back, and they have a new brood sow, okay? So a new female pig, remember, theirs was killed at the beginning by old Slewfoot. So the uh, foresters sent over all of them. And there's not a ton of food left. So this is in between when all the new crops are going to be ready. And when it's that hot, animals don't move around a lot. So it's harder to hunt. So it, it um, goes through here and talks about Flag. How Flag is getting smarter, running around. And he goes out to the sinkhole to get um water and it's like everywhere he looks he feels like he's just reminded of Fodderwing. So this is Jody trying to deal with the fact that his friend's not there anymore, but everything he sees reminds him of Fodderwing. Like he thinks he sees the Spaniard, he sees all these animals, like the raccoon and the baby raccoons, and it's like although Fodderwing isn't there, it's he's everywhere to him and everything that he sees. So chapter 19, it's September, and it's still extremely hot. Um, not a ton of meat at all, and the crops aren't necessarily ready yet. And Penny warns him that because the animals aren't moving around a ton, that he needs to be careful with flag because things like bears and stuff will be after him. And here it's talking about that they haven't had rain. And, and you all know Memphis heat when you don't have rain is extremely dry and for them they have to have it for their crops 
So it's been several days and then they have a couple of signs of rain and then they're seeing some strange things like seabirds flying over. And so Penny knows like something big is about if the birds that are usually on the coast come in, they know a huge storm is coming. So that storm eventually comes. It's huge. It sounds like a roar. And um, they bring flag and some of the animals inside. And while they're inside, you have, of course, Penny tell a lot of stories. Like he tells about a story about his old hunting dog, who was the best. And uh, the time a buck outwit him and all this kind of stuff. And for them in this little scene you also have Ma tell a story and it's absolutely awful <laughs> and they kind of laugh about that and so it's been raining a couple days and they're waiting for the break in the storm and it's not coming and so the more it rains for them the worse it is because they can't go out and hunt and then it's completely destroying all of their crops okay and it talks about they have to bring some peas in to try to dry them out. The corn, potatoes are going to rot. The hay is completely gone. It's totally rotten. They can't use it. And so they're trying to save as much of it as they possibly can. Um, and it's rained seven days straight. And then it finally stops. Okay. So they um, go outside and... You see Jody and the fawn jump out and they kind of run around. But it says that Penny and Ma just look out over the fields where they had their food. It says all she can do is cry. Um, so in this moment, you can tell Penny and Ma know exactly what this means. Jody, not necessarily. So chapter 20, the foresters come by, Buck and Millwell, you'll notice, come by to check on everybody. And... It says that Lim has gotten angry and that he stormed off and they think he's going to go check on Twink because that's not over with yet. And they decide to pack up and go kind of see what's happened out in the scrub because of this rain. And as they're going through, you have a ton of description. So basically, all of the rivers and the lakes have backed up. Yeah, I mean, it even says that there are fish that are normally in the sea there. Remember, this is in Florida, okay? So it is completely covered everywhere. And it said, uh, it talks about, you know, animals being out of their normal. So things hiding up in trees that would normally kill one another. The animals are lean because they don't have enough food. There's a ton of dead animals everywhere in the water. And they go and they check on Doc Wilson and he's gone to the to the beach. So he's fine. And so they go through and um, they kill a few things like they kill some wild cats because all they're going to do is kill everything else. Um, they also shoot at um, a panther and some cubs, which Penny needed anyways, because it says he uses the oil from the panther uh, for his arthritis and they decide to camp for the night and every animal that they kill they notice they're not in good condition which means they don't have enough food to eat that's foreshadowing to you that these creatures that are that have always been out in the scrub have been able to go and fend for themselves and eat and now that scrub has been taken away okay so these creatures are starving and they're going to have to find food somewhere, okay? So they camp, they make food, you know, their food and everything like that. You have um, story times with Penny that talk about, um, I talked to Buck and Millwell about their parents when they were younger, which of course they love. <clears throat> and then they go to sleep and they wake up in the middle of the night and there's a, an alligator over there um, and they kind of scare it back. So as they're traveling back, when they wake up that morning, they're going to go wash in the water. And it says the smell is awful. So all of these creatures that are dying, that are dying are in this water. 
and it says they as individuals, okay, as human beings cannot drink this water now, okay, which is a big deal. And he also, uh, Penny makes a good comment that says, as far as animals, will they be able to drink it? Because that's also huge. So on their way back, you have them run into a bunch of bears that they all shoot at. Even Jody kills one and they kind of split it up. So they get a good haul as far as meat and things like that because let's be real, they're all hurting because they haven't been able to hunt at all, especially the Baxters, okay? And so at the end of uh, chapter 20, they head home and then of course Flag is there because he wasn't allowed to take them along. So he brings back a ton of meat, which is good, but now they're going to have to figure out what are they gonna do about their crops? And then how is this, fl this flood going to affect their everyday lives from here on out?